Hattie Larlam was a woman with a vision, a woman of faith, of family, a nurse. Hattie Lena Gad was born on a West Virginia farm, one of 11 children, to a lay minister and his wife who tended to the children, the farm, and was midwife to the surrounding area. And her mother was a midwife. He would go and save the souls, and her mother would go and save the babies as they were born. Growing up, Hattie dreamed of faraway missions and decided to attend a nursing school in Ohio. After marrying Richard Larlam, she traveled across the country until their three children were born. They moved back to Ohio, where Hattie got a position in the premature nursery ward at a hospital in Ravenna. Richard bought a small farm, and the family finally settled down in Manaway. As a nurse in the newborn unit, Hattie would see children born with horrible disabilities and physical deformities. She quickly learned that there was no place that would care for children with mental retardation or severe medical problems. It was at this time that she cared for a young girl named Alice, whose parents were Hattie's neighbors. After months of hospitalization, Alice's insurance ran out. And she came home and she talked to us about it and someone said somebody should do something and Charles said, aren't we somebody? Dick and I are Christian people. It seems to me that every Christian has a line of service for the Lord and uh, in praying about what we would do, it seemed that more and more it was brought to our attention that this would be a thing that we could do for service to humanity. And that is where it began. The next morning, Hattie called about licensing, and Alice came to live with the Larlums on a sunny June day in 1961. Alice lived in that Manaway farmhouse for two years, during which Hattie's license was increased to allow for nine more babies. Some people would call it sacrifice, perhaps, but we didn't feel actually that it was a sacrifice. Neighbors and housewives volunteered to help bathe, rock, and feed the children while Hattie provided most of their medical care. During this time, Hattie met Bob Garfield and Ned Sargent, two local businessmen who heard about Hattie's work. And see, that's what, what really helped us to get going and, and kept us going, was the fact that everybody we met wanted to help. It was these men who helped open doors for Hattie, building on her vision of developing a facility for children with devastating medical conditions. She dreamed of a place where these children could go, a hospital, a home. She had made up her mind that she was going to build a hospital. I helped her assemble a group of trustees. We chartered as a nonprofit foundation and we estimated our financial needs as about $150,000 for the building, the equipment, and the startup expenses. It was with the help of many volunteers and countless hours of fundraising by Hattie and Richard that the hospital was finally opened in 1966 and appropriately named the Hattie Larlam Foundation. Biggest problem we've had is public relations, I think the lack of awareness of the public to the need. Through those early years, Hattie would always strive for the best possible care to the children who came to her. She made herself available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and the staff was amazed by her dedication and shared her commitment to the children. Well, I started here as a volunteer, giving a couple of days or a day or so a week, and then I fell in love with these children as I saw the need, and so, I'm stuck. Hattie believed that through love, faith, and care, children could thrive and live, even when experts said they had no chance of survival. However, she also believed that there needed to be a major overhaul in how government and society treated children with special needs. Through her efforts and those she enlisted to help, changes began to happen at the state level. Hattie headed up a statewide effort to petition then-Governor John Gilligan with over 200,000 signatures, giving children birth through six years old the same rights to residential care, treatment, and training, and requiring government funding to pay for those services. Recognizing the need for more research in the field of developmental disabilities, 
Hattie was instrumental from the beginning. This is a tremendous phase of the program now. We're caring for children here at the present time who are already here. But if, if we can prevent future occurrences, that's even a greater part of the program. Therapy and equipment was a passion for Hattie. She constantly looked for new ideas on how to make treatment more effective and equipment more adaptable. And a lot of the things that they do now to head off problems with handicapped people uh, that's done right out of the, the birth originated with ideas at the Hattie Larlam Foundation, I know this. In 1971, it became apparent that more room was needed at the foundation for more children. The first expansion made it possible to house 130 children with special needs. By 1977, it was time for Hattie and Richard to retire, and they turned the operation over to a newly formed administrative staff who followed the path mapped out by the Larlums. The foundation grew with three more expansions to the main facility, as well as many additions to programs and treatments for individuals of all ages. There are all kinds of group homes, and there are all kinds of foster care, and there's respite care, and there's classes in, I mean, it's just grown just huge. And when Hattie got Alzheimer's and broke a hip and came to live with us for the last few years of her life, she was still concerned about the babies. Hattie died on February 28, 1996, and her beloved Richard on September 4, 2006. They were both laid to rest on the farmland they bought, raised their children, and started a foundation that helped so many people. Hattie and Richard live on through the over 1,500 children and adults served by the foundation throughout the state of Ohio. People, this, I think, were amazed with her. They thought. They were impressed, you know, and how could just one person change a society? She was on the leading edge in many, many ways. Mom didn't understand that some things weren't possible, so they happened anyway. Hattie Larlam, an inventor and innovator. She had a dream that she wasn't afraid to pursue. She had a family that loved and cared for her children with her. She had supporters and friends. She had commitment, but most importantly, she had faith, and that was how she lived her life.